Hi, and welcome to Explore Classroom. My name is Jennifer Bergen, and I am so happy to have you join us today. At National Geographic, we know the power of exploration, wonder, and storytelling can change the world. And this Explore Classroom YouTube show connects students from all over the world with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and time for your questions. Today, our explorer is Emily Toner. Emily is a soil geographer from Iowa who explores the science and the culture of soils all over the globe. And as a Fulbright National Geographic Digital Storytelling Fellow, Emily traveled to Ireland and she researched how people formed important relationships with something called a peat bog. Mm. Peat bogs are a special type of wetland that have a large carbon density, and that carbon density helps protect our earth and its climate. Emily loves learning and writing about how people's cultures intersect with soil studies, and she hopes that after today's show, you will also appreciate how special wetlands are, like peat bogs, to our planet. But before we get into today's lessons, let's welcome all the friends joining us from all over the world. Today, our registered classes represent places across US and Canada and around the globe. So good morning to Lorne Park Public School, the Egans, the Hudsons, Swansea Public School, Easton Park, Amadeor Elementary, Woodbury Elementary, TDSB Virtual School, Lamberton Studies, Ruby Duncan Elementary, Allen B. Junior Public School, M.K. Lewis School, Millville, and Pleasant Valley Elementary School. We are so thrilled to have all of you here and many more out there on YouTube. And with that, let's get this Explorer Classroom started. It's time to turn it over to Emily to share all about surprisingly colorful Irish peat bogs. Take it away, Emily. Thank you, Jennifer. Hi, everybody. My name is Emily, and I am really excited to be here with you. Before I begin, I'm going to share my screen with you. So I hope you can see my screen now. Perfect. Um, so yeah, as Jennifer said, I'm an explorer. And what I like to explore is something that I'm showing you here on the screen. And you might see that little picture on the right and think that I'm exploring brownies and chocolate cake, but it's actually soil, or you might have called it more often dirt. And you might think, what could be interesting about soil or dirt? Well, I hope by the end of our time today, you have lots of answers to that question. So, um, when you look at soil or dirt, it means you're going under your feet into the earth. So you might do that by digging a hole or you might uh, sometimes see really big holes like the ones in this, these photos where you can actually see a lot of soil and go deep into the ground. And one thing I wanted to show you here is that soil can be really different all around the world. Do you see things that are different about these three types of soil here? Can you see that the colors are different? Can you see that the texture is different? Some of them have big rocks, some look really smooth. So we're going to talk about one special type of soil that is found across the world. And we'll talk about it in just a second, but in case you thought you've never explored soil yourself, I wanted to tell you that you probably have because have you ever been to a beach? Maybe you've gone to a lake or in the ocean, you might've gone to a big beach. And if you've ever played with the sand on a beach, that's actually a type of soil. So if you've ever dug a hole or built a sand castle on the beach, then you've explored soil too. But the soil we're going to look at today is really different than sand. Um, another way you may have explored soil is if you've ever grown a plant. A lot of people like to grow gardens with vegetables or flowers or fruit. 
And so if you've ever grown, like in this photo, there's lettuce and onions or my friend chopping up carrots and peppers from her own garden. If you've ever done that, it's another way that you've explored and used soil or dirt. So maybe you've uh, seen and used soil a little more than you think. Well, when I go out and look for soil, I'm usually looking for something pretty special about it. And sometimes it's actually hard to see. So you might have to use special tools to measure uh, certain things about soil that scientists and research, researchers want to see. And one of the things that's really important about soil is how much carbon is inside of it. And one thing you can actually tell about carbon is the darkness of a soil and the darker and blacker a soil is, the more carbon it will have inside of it. So if you look at the soil that I'm bending down to inspect here, does it look pretty dark and black? And if it does, that means it probably has a lot of carbon. Carbon is really important for our planet, and the more carbon we can store inside of our soil, the darker and blacker it is, the healthier that our climate and our planet can be. So if you find dark black soil around the world, it's really important to protect it. And so we are going to go to Ireland to look at a dark black carbon rich soil that's found in wetlands and peat bogs. And we're going to look at the really colorful plants and animals that live on top of that soil. So let's go ahead and we're going to leave the United States and zoom around the planet over to Europe, across the Atlantic Ocean, to a different continent and a different country called Ireland. So we've zoomed in on Ireland here. And if you can see this satellite image or the map that we're looking at, you see lots of green, right? But then you also see some darker places on the map. And those are related to this special type of soil that we're going to go see. So one of the things we're going to do today for the next few minutes is we're going to keep zooming in because you really have to get down very close to a peat bog, the ecosystem that we're going to look at to notice what makes it special. So we're going to jump down into one of these bogs. And so as Jennifer mentioned, peat bogs where this special dark rich soil is found, they're actually a wetland. And so a wetland is a place that's really wet. It's just that simple. So can you see water here in this photo? You can. I can see it right there, that blue in the middle. That's part of what makes this a wetland. There's going to be water very close to the surface. And that means that the things that like to live inside this special wetland, which is called a peat bog, they really need that water. And it's only in a special wetland place like this that they can actually live. They need the special conditions of the bog. And so if you actually went under the surface of that lake and the plants and the tree that you saw in that photo, you'd find lots and lots of really rich, special soil. The soil actually has a special name and it's called peat soil. It's really, really dark black. Can you see how dark that soil is in my hand? That means, like I mentioned before, that it has a lot of carbon. So that's a really rich, important soil and we want to protect that soil. So let's zoom in a little further. And one thing I thought you might notice about bogs is, unless you do zoom in, they look a little brown, right? This doesn't look too colorful. But actually the theme of our time together is finding the rainbow in the bog. Do you see many colors of the rainbow here? I don't see any colors of the rainbow here yet. So we're gonna have to work a little harder, zoom in, and together we're going to find more colors in the bog. So I'm gonna need your help a little bit and we're gonna use our bodies. So. First, we're going to take our feet and we're going to jump into the bog so that we can zoom in. Are you ready to try to jump in? 
Okay, we're going to jump on the count of three so we can bend down and get into the bog. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Did you jump in with me? Now, the next thing we need to do is, now that we've jumped into the bog, we need to fill in the rainbow. So whenever we're going to fill in a color of the rainbow, can you wave your hands across your body like in a big arc like this? So let's practice one time. We're going to one, two, three, fill in the rainbow. Nice work. So each time we're going to search for a new color and find it in the bog, at the end of our uh, exploration looking for that color, we're going to fill in the rainbow. So let's start now that we've zoomed in and we're going to jump deeper into the bog. We're going to start filling in the rainbow and we're going to start with red. So within this peat bog, what can we find that is the color red? Well, one thing you can find is sphagnum moss. Moss is one of the most common plants in the bog and it can actually be many different colors. So keep an eye out and see if you see a plant that looks like this moss in any of the other colors too. There are actually more than 350 types of sphagnum moss. So we're not gonna be able to find them all today but maybe we'll find a few. So keep an eye out and see if you see any other types of moss as we go. So that's one red thing we can find in the bog. Let's keep going. Whoa, I see a couple of different red things here. Do you see that big berry in the middle of the photo? That is a wild cranberry. And these grow in the bog and they're actually edible for humans too. So we can eat these. So if you are in a bog and you ever see a cranberry, you could even give it a try, but it's really sour. So you might notice that. Do you see something else red besides the berry in this photo? Kind of looks a little crazy, doesn't it? It has all those tentacles and some dew drops. That plant is called a sundew and it's doing something surprising for a plant in this photo. Can you tell what it's wrapped itself around? Looks like a bee or a fly because sundews are carnivorous plants that eat insects. Have you ever seen a plant that eats an animal? They're pretty unusual. You might have seen a Venus flytrap before. A sundew wraps itself around the insect and digests it because it needs nutrients. Inside of a bog, that peat soil, even though it has a lot of carbon, it actually doesn't have a lot of other nutrients that the plant needs to grow and be healthy. So the sundew is being very clever and it's finding nutrients and the food it needs in the air instead of down in the soil where its roots are. So one of the ways a sundew survives in the special conditions of a bog is by hunting for its food in the air. Okay, so we found our red items. Are you ready to fill in the rainbow on the count of three? One, two, three, fill in the rainbow. We added red. Okay, next up we need to search for orange in the bog. So let's see if we can find, wow, another sphagnum moss. This one even has two or three colors on it. I see some orange around the edge, some green in the middle. Do you see any other colors? Maybe a little yellow? So another sphagnum moss, we're going to see a lot of that because it's one of the most important plants in the, in the peat bog. Oh, and a butterfly. There are a lot of insects and butterflies that thrive inside the peat bog too. This butterfly happens to be the largest butterfly in Ireland. It's called a silver washed fritillary. And so bogs, peat bogs, and that special soil underneath, the peat soil, they create a habitat and a place for a lot of different insects to live. 
So now we have moss and a butterfly that's orange. Let's see if we can find anything else. Ooh, what is that? Have you ever seen anything like that? It's called a lichen and it's a mixture of fungus and algae that work together to make a unique plant structure. This one is actually called a matchstick lichen and it grows right out of the peat soil. They're pretty small. They kind of look like they're from another world, I think. They're really curious looking. Or some people say they look like they would be under the ocean growing as coral. They just look very unique. So now we can put that in our orange category. Let's see if we find anything else orange. Hey, I don't see anything like a plant or an animal, but I do see a kid wearing an orange jacket here. And I put this in here too, because there are a lot of people in bogs. And I particularly liked this kid because he looks like he's exploring my favorite thing, which is soil. He's really deep down in there. So he gets to be part of our orange rainbow too. Okay, time to fill in the orange. Are you ready to fill in the rainbow? One, two, three, fill in the rainbow. Nice, okay, we added our butterfly. So it's time to move on to yellow. Let's see what we can find in the bog that's yellow. Hey, more sphagnum moss. There's more moss. We have so much moss in the bog. And ooh, some nice flowers. This flower is called bog asphodel. And I actually think it looks like something kind of fuzzy and cuddly. Does it remind you of anything? Kind of reminds me of a duck. What does it remind you of? Maybe a chicken? I don't know. Uh, anyway, it's a really beautiful flower that only grows in the bog. So this flower, just like some of the insects and the sphagnum moss, it really needs peat bogs and peat soil to be healthy and wet because they're supposed to be a wetland in order to thrive. So we need healthy bogs in order to have this beautiful flower on our planet. Oh, wow. Do you see that growing on the log? I think we have to zoom in a little bit more to see it better. Mm, that is a type of fungus. Looks like an antler, doesn't it? It's really bright yellow. Let's see what else might be yellow. Another kid. This is a kid named Timothy who I met in the bog and he's an explorer too. He actually studies insects in the bog. What do you think he might have in his hands? Should we check? Let's look in what is inside of Timothy's hands. Whoa, a tiny insect. He told me that this is called a tiny stick bug. Timothy studies insects and even moths in the bog, and he's collected more than a hundred types of moths from a single bog. He was pretty cool. One more yellow thing. This is kind of a dark yellow. It's the frog that also lives in the bog. In Ireland, there's only one type of frog in the whole country and it loves to live in the bog. And that's where it has its babies too. Does anybody know what a baby frog is called? Did you say a tadpole? Then you were right. Let's see if we notice in the rest of our rainbow if we find any tadpoles. Okay, are you ready to fill in the rainbow? One, two, three. Yellow is added. Okay, next up, we're moving on to green. Hmm, I wonder what will be green in the bog. Do you see anything green in this photo? 
I see lots of green, especially the moss. So of course, we're adding another type of sphagnum moss to our rainbow because moss is the most important plant of the bog. We've seen it in every single color so far. This moss is really beautiful. This one is called cuspidatum, and it's the type of moss that grows in the wettest places in the bog. So if you see a pool of water and there's moss growing in it on a peat bog, it will probably be cuspidatum, this type of moss. There are more than 25 species of sphagnum moss in Irish bogs. And so uh, one of the things you might like to do if you ever visit a bog is see how many different types of moss you can find. More butterflies in the bog. I thought this was the most beautiful butterfly I saw in the Irish bog because it's iridescent with blue and green on it. Hmm, more kids. I see them wearing green sweaters, so I thought they would fit into our rainbow, the color green. But the most important thing is what are they carrying? Do you see them carrying a tray? And it has something very wet in it. Let's see what's inside that tray by zooming in a little bit. Whoa. What is that? Do you recognize it? Do you remember we said we were going to look for those baby frogs called tadpoles? They are carrying, those girls were carrying a tray of tadpoles. I found them when I was in one of the bogs and they had noticed a puddle of baby frogs or tadpoles and the puddle was starting to dry up. And so they wanted to save those tadpoles in case the puddle would dry up completely. So they scooped up a tray of tadpoles and they walked it to a part of the bog that was even wetter so that these baby tadpoles could turn into frogs eventually. Okay, let's see if we have anything else. That was our last green thing. So it's time to fill in the rainbow. One, two, three. All right, we've added green to our rainbow. Only two more colors. Next up, we have blue. Let's see what we can find that's blue in a peat bog. Ooh, this is a pretty small one. Do you see that's on the tip of a finger? It's a special type of bird shell. There are a lot of birds that really need the bog to live. Some birds can only lay their eggs inside of a bog. So if you ha don't have a healthy bog, they would have nowhere to have their babies. So that would be pretty uh, important for them to have a peat bog around. So one thing you might find that's blue in the bog is a special type of bird shell. What do you see that's blue in this photograph? The sky, that's right. I wanted to include the sky as part of the bog because one of the most important things about a bog is rain. A bog gets all of its water from rain and it's a very wet place. So this is a very important relationship that it has with the sky. So we are including the blue sky and the rain that it provides to make the wetland the wet place that it is. And Another person with a blue jacket. This is a volunteer that I met in the bog and she was doing something kind of interesting out there. Do you see what she's holding in her hands? It's a measuring stick. I wonder what she could be measuring in the middle of the bog. She was actually trying to protect the bog. And so she was measuring the level of the water in the bog and taking pictures of it to watch how it changes over time. The reason she wanted to, wanted to measure the water level in the bog is because for a bog to be healthy and for all of these butterflies and moss and birds that need the bog to be healthy, they need a bog that's really wet. And if the water dries up and drops below a certain level, 
the animals and the insects, they actually can't live there anymore. So she's taking a really close interest in monitoring and watching and protecting the bog that's next to her house to make sure the water stays very near the surface. So she's using her measuring stick to see how far away from the surface the water is over time. That's pretty cool, right? So that's blue. Are you ready to fill in the rainbow? One, two, three. Nice job. Thanks for helping me fill in the rainbow. Last color. And I'm a little sneaky because we're actually putting two colors into the last color. We're going to do purple and pink. Okay. Wow. That's a pretty nice flower. This is another flower that grows in and near a bog. And it's one of the flowers. It's called Devil's Scarabus that has the most interest for bees and pollinators. So this is a really beautiful purple flower that provides a lot of food to the insects that live around the bog. Another flower that gives a lot of food to the insects is one of the most common bog plants after sphagnum moss, which is called heather. This bee is going in to eat the nectar and the pollen from the heather. And in Ireland, you can actually buy honey that's only made from these heather flowers. So you can buy heather honey from made by, maybe made by this bee himself. Here's a picture of as you walk along a boardwalk in a bog, all covered with that purple and pink heather flower. Why do you think there would be this board for walking down the middle of a bog? It's because it's so wet there. If you actually walked on the surface of the bog, you would sink in down to your knees and get completely wet. So in order to walk and uh, comfortably and safely through the bog, a lot of people build boardwalks so that you can actually go into this special wetland and you can stay safe and dry and you can also protect the wetland by not stepping right on it. Okay, a couple more pink and purple things. Um, there are actually orchid flowers that grow specially in bogs. I thought this is a really pretty one with its stripes. So you can have orchids inside of a bog. And one more flower, and that is the, it's called bog rosemary. And this special flower only grows in the bog. And it's so special that the place I was living actually included it on their crest. So do you see that crest on the side that has a big lion dragon animal? I don't know what that animal is. And some colors that represent that county and also one single flower and that's actually the bog rosemary. It's such a special little flower for this community that they actually included it on their crest and it's from the bog. So that was pink and purple. So we have to fill in the rainbow one last time. Ready? One, two, three. And our purple is filled in. So we did it. We found the whole rainbow in the bog. Nice job everyone and thank you for helping me fill it in by waving your arms. So next time you're in a bog or even a park or someplace nearby your house that's out with some plants in nature, I wanted to encourage you to zoom in because even if you look at this photo, it's of a bog. It kind of looks like that brown photo we looked at in the beginning. But if you start to look a little closer, you can already see how much color and there is in the bog and all the interesting things you might notice if you just zoom in a little bit more. I found this whole bouquet of sphagnum moss in that bog. So you remember I said that there are 25 types of sphagnum moss in Irish bogs. I think I found maybe 10 of them just in this bog alone. It was really fun and colorful to look for them. 
So I will stop there and just encourage you to look for the rainbow and zoom in wherever you are, but also to remember that wetlands and peat bogs are really special, important places that have lots of beautiful life that needs protected and needs wetlands to survive. Well, friends, we're coming to the end of our show, and I know you have so many more questions. So on everyone's behalf, I'll just ask a final question so that we can keep Emily's mission going. Emily, how can we zoom into nature around us, especially since not everybody lives by a peat bog? So how can we see what's special about where we live? Thanks for the last question, Jennifer. Yeah, I think... Um, it was really special for us to go to Ireland together and zoom in on peat bogs and find all of the special things in that wetland. But you can actually zoom in anywhere that you are, even on the sidewalk outside in your backyard, in a forest, anywhere that you can go outside and find nature. If you look closer than you usually do and zoom way in, I bet you'll find something very special and new about it that you've never seen before. And that might just make you curious and wanting to protect it and uh, appreciate it. Emily, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. It was very special to be with you all. I bet many of you are interested in more opportunities like today's Explorer Classroom. So please be sure to check out our schedule. We've got many more um, Explorer classrooms planned, although we will be taking a bit of a summer break. I'll tell you about that in a second. But we've got lots of resources. If you go to natgeoed.org, you can find resources like Explorer Classroom um, and also fun activities for you to do with your family or your classroom. This time next week, we'll be right back here live together with Isla K. Davidson. And we're gonna be learning about how fish can communicate. Hello, hello fish. Um, we also only have two more sessions until our summer break. I cannot believe it. So join us for as much as you can, but don't get upset. All of our shows are archived on YouTube and we'll be back together in the fall. Also, make sure that you note, we will not have an episode on May 31st. In America, that is Memorial Day and we'll be taking a break to honor that holiday. So again, happy Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. May is a special month and we want all of you to take some time and consider how you can celebrate Asian American and Pacific Islander heritage and also celebrate the people who identify as such and recognize the joy and the excellence that they bring to our communities. So that includes some of our National Geographic Explorers and you can find resources again on our website. So have a great day, everyone. Stay curious, keep exploring, 